I, I live in a house without a heating system and people think I'm cold, but actually I'm not cold. <laughs> and the electricity company pay me more than I pay them. I retired a few years ago, this is me retiring, hanging up my tools and I built myself a few years later a brand new house with no heating system. <laughs> and I've been there for 11 years. I'm not cold. If I go out, I put a table lamp on for my wife as I'm worth 75 watts and so 60 watt table lamp keeps her warm enough. <laughs> I'm not worth much more than that. So we're going to talk about, I'm not sure we're talking about insulation because the boys have done that. We talk about draft proofing, so I'll stop the nonsense, go for this. So I was trained as a research chemist. I then became a builder, which is an unusual course to go. And I retired, but I'm now often involved in sustainability consultancy. And today I'm here to talk about draft proofing and energy saving advice. My hobby is saving energy, reducing energy use. That's my number one hobby. Go for it. So... They've talked about loft insulation. I think we're going to skip this slide. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, I had windows at the bottom. They're the last thing that you do if you start doing any of these things. So for me, these are economic options. Draft proof windows and doors. Insulate your loft. Good boys, they said that. Replace the heating control with a programmable thermostat. We can talk about that later. Insulate walls, insulate roof. New boiler, air sealing and drafts throughout the structure. That does come quite low down. And again, low... Doing your windows is the last thing to do. Most people do windows first. Next one. I said I'd go quick. If you want to shout out and ask questions, you're allowed to, but if you try twice, I might not answer. So this was a draft proofing seminar that I did a few years ago, training people in Reading to do it. And it's quite funny. There's a massive draft coming under the door. And we'll come back to that one later. How much can you save by draft proofing? I think I might need to update my things because I'm not sure how old their figures were. <laughs> but I think all these figures are going to have gone up because we've had the energy price hike. But full draft roofing saves £90 a year. But the interesting thing about a draft-free home is that you can actually live at a slightly lower temperature. It's a bit like underfloor heating. You can set the thermostat down probably a whole degree. And by doing that whole degree, we'll come back to this one again later, you're going to save another £60 a year because if it's not drafty, you feel warmer even though the temperature is slightly lower. So we look for drafts. I go around looking for drafts. I'm afraid I look everywhere. I look at these doors and I think, are they drafty or not? And you can see sometimes daylight out through windows and doors. You can sometimes see daylight out through these kind of fan vents up there. I've had that trouble. And so basically when you're wanting to find drafts, you look for them. The next thing you can do is you can do this kind of thing on the back of your hand with a bit of water and hold it by your skirting board or your three pin socket outlet and see if there's draft coming out of there. You can hold it at the light fitting, you can hold it at the, around the door at the letterbox, all sorts of things and that will be cold and you know there's a draft. And drafts are any accidental gap in the construction and builders, I'm afraid I used to be a builder, and we leave gaps everywhere. They're behind your kitchen sink, they're under your bath, they're, they're everywhere. I was, towards the end of my career, I was kind of OCD about making sure the boys filled up every hole but we'll see some later. Loft hatches are notoriously drafty. I've been to loads of places on draft busters and we find that they've got loft hatches very rarely with any draft strips around them and remarkably they've had loft insulation or oh, I better be careful about the voice loft insulation done but they didn't insulate the loft trap I can't believe they wouldn't insulate the loft trap and so if I do a thermal image the loft trap looks blue and the rest of the ceiling is kind of yellow or green a bit warmer electrical sockets fittings on walls and ceilings suspended floorboards we had the gents talking about that earlier I quite like draft proofing floorboards it's one of the things that we don't do at draft busters but you can buy special little strips that will go between the floorboards cut out the drafts and that same strip will go underneath the skirting sometimes i've foamed under skirtings for special hardship cases and then you tell them they've got to cut the foam off the next day and you kind of pray that it doesn't mess things up but i put a piece of um, masking tape down so they can sort it all out the ceiling to wall join quite often there's a crack along the ceiling to wall and I'll let you into a secret. If I see that the crack is looking black, I'm almost certain there's a draft coming through it. And that applies to round windows, to skirtings. I had a lady with a carpet in an upstairs bedroom in the middle of the house, and she was embarrassed because the edge of the carpet, it was a light coloured carpet, it was all kind of black. And what was happening was a draft was going up the cavity, 
into the floor void and coming out near her wardrobe in her house and coming out the skirting board and coming through the carpet a little bit and leaving the dust from outside blackening her carpet. It's well sick, I explained to her, it's nothing to do with your hoovering or anything to do, it's probably you've got a draft in your house. Pipe work to outside seat, uh, floorboards, yep, go to the next one. God, we're doing well, aren't we? <coughs> so this is a real one that I've done and this is a UPVC window door fitted in a kind of Victorian terrace. And down behind this is called an architrave. You can see there's a gap. There's a massive draft coming out of that. So they've got a double glazed, draft sealed UPVC door, but round the edge of it, they've got a draft coming out. And it wasn't a draft, it was a howling gale. And so it's quite like, we just fill that up with painters, mate, and stop the drafts coming in kind of after the horse has bolted. Next one. This one is a hole through the wall. The plumber's been there, put a new bath in, smashed a hole in the wall. So now we've got a draft going in under their bath and then unfortunately it can go under the floorboards and it's just, it's a catalogue of disasters. So have a look and see if you've got, this one's quite nicely sealed round, not quite perfect, but pretty good. But that's disgraceful, like a bird could get in there or something bigger. Next, floorboards, we've done them, we'll, we might talk about that, but those kind of floors, if you've got a gap between your floorboard, massive drafts coming in and so I worry about drafts more than I worry about insulation. I love insulating floors but draft proof them first. Next. Yeah here we go loft traps. Now shouldn't fit the smoke detector on the loft trap but you can see this it looks a little bit black around the edges here and we don't like it when it's black around the edges because there might be drafts and I also worry about it even if you do draft strip that sometimes there's a draft coming in behind the architrave so you've got lots of checking do you need to get one of those guns with the decorators coke on it next one <sighs> chimneys and fireplaces these it's unbelievable the number of chimneys and fireplaces I've been in I went into one guy's house and he was a uh, active in the local green groups and I said to him it's in his office in his second bedroom or third bedroom or something and I put my head in the fireplace right, and I looked right up I could see daylight out the top and he's sitting there in his office and wondering why he's cold and so what I do is I get a black sack <coughs> I task him please can you give me an old pillow or cushion shove it in and shove it up the chimney and it's called a chimney balloon and you have to be careful if you ever like that fire don't leave it there but it is brilliant <laughs> and if that chimney is on an internal wall, I'm completely happy about it not being ventilated. If it's on an outside wall, I'm a bit less happy, but I still put the thing up it. And you can have a cap fitted over the top of the chimney pot, but it's really horrible. You've got a warm air is getting drawn into the chimney and forming a, a chimney effect of warm air going up. I've stood on the top of a chimney and opened my shirt up in the winter and it's quite nice and warm, the water stuff coming out, warm air. Sheep, yeah, you can put a sheep, yeah, 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 well done. Probably a good tourist, but pillow in a black plastic sack is good because you can, you can get the pillow back out again if you want it. Where are we next? Um, oh, yeah, we've done it. Remember to move the chimney if you ever light a fire. Remember to move the draft proofing. Rem what have we got next? I think we've done that one, did we? Yeah, now this is what I was talking about black. This is a wooden window. And can you see this kind of fan of black coming out there? There's another one down here, it'll come up on the slide. Guaranteed draft, absolutely guaranteed. If you've got any of these black fanny things, that's a draft and that's a wooden window. You open it, you stick down a draft strip, sticky self-adhesive. It sounds easy, it's not. There's, I, I carry eight different sizes of sticky self-adhesive strips, including nylon brush ones for using up and down here. And sometimes you find you need a different one and then another different one and then a third different one and across the top another different one. And if it's a door, you have to be very careful to make sure that not only does the door shut, but also the security lock goes because they can move things around. But that's kind of advanced draft proofing when you need to get and do things like that. But if you don't do it, you've got cold coming in. And it, you've also got like, I think they're quite unsightly, those fans. Next. <coughs> this is a UPVC window. And I think this is a window board down here. And that's the curtain hanging up. And that's her freeze. And that's down and this is up. And I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure which way around it is. But if you look around here, this is black and there's a gap. And underneath that window board is the cavity where they like to put cavity wall insulation but out of that cap, gap is coming the most massive draft because it's underneath the windowsill. They're not that good when they fit windows, even when they build new houses. And a draft comes in under there, but this, the cavity is almost certainly drafty. And that's a draft. And so all we do with that is the painters make gun. 
you go along and sometimes I use silicone, sometimes I use paint to make, depending on how I'm feeling to do that. But it's very simple, very cheap, and it gets rid of your draft. And the last thing you want is drafts in the window. Next one. Is that the sort of thing that would cause the howling noise? Yeah, you can have a noise coming out through them, yeah. Yeah, you can have dust coming all, all over the ornaments and things. You've got nasty dust. Next. What we got next? Oh, yeah, this is such a bad story, this. I went into a special deal. Rotary Club said we'll fund some uh, special sustainability service. I went to this guy. He's just bought an £800,000 house. I went in, and he's got lovely triple glazed windows, window boards, all the rest of it, radiator under the window. And I went like this down, have a look. I could see underneath the window board, straight out down his garden. So he's got all this fancy stuff. He's got a radiator, and I can see down his garden. They had put the window on packers, never filled up outside. The window board had lifted very slightly. It's just incredible. And so there's a massive draft coming in above the radiator. Fortunately, <laughs> he could afford to pay the bills. But I said to him, you've, you've got to at least get the gun and seal it in. And I said, get the builders back to do it. This is a UPVC door with a strip, and the strip has fallen out. It's actually really easy to shove that strip back in again. You, all you need to do is just kind of wipe this with a silicone wipe or water with fairy liquid in it. You can literally press that strip back in again. You can buy these strips or samples of them to put in if it's damaged or something, but somebody's kicked that coming in the door. There's usually two seals, one on the frame and one on the back of the door, which both kind of shut and they're doing a double seal. In my house, my windows have got four <laughs> seals on them, but you, you can't really afford to have one missing. It's going to be drafty, and there's no point in having double glazed if it's drafty. Next one. Yeah, so we've got lots of different types of seals. I already mentioned the sticky on ones we've got. These ones are the kind of thing you put across the bottom of a front door or back door if you've got a wooden one, and they're quite useful. I really like these kind of seals. I often use one that's called, that's called a P. You can see why it's called a P. There's E and there's D which the D has got not the, not the wing on it. These ones go into wooden frames, but there's a massive array of strips, and I'm kind of a connoisseur of strips, because like I said, I've got eight different ones in my box. I'm afraid I didn't bring out any samples, but you go into the DIY stores and you can buy that kind of stuff. I refuse to buy from DIY stores because one door's worth of draft strips, quite often 10 quid, and that's is that two pounds a meter? I think it's five meters around a door, two meters, two meters, and one meter across the top. So I usually buy 100 meters or 200 meters of draft proof roll and I pay 40p a meter. So I've got massive savings already and then I help people save money as well. But I do use quite a lot of the stuff and there are literally loads of different sizes, styles, and shapes butyl rubber, foam rubber. Next one. So this is the one that goes between the floorboards. This thing, I don't usually advertise products, but I really like it. It's basically a cylinder of butyl rubber, and there's three different sizes from Draft X. There's one that's like two millimetres, which I think is too small. There's one that's about five millimetres, which is perfect for most things. And then there's one that's 10 millimetres, which is getting quite big, eight millimetres maybe. And this clever little thing here pushes that strip halfway down the floorboard and it looked, I think, I think they look really good, those ones. I've done string and wax and all sorts of stuff, paper mache, anything going down there. But those are good. And if the gap gets narrow, you can pull with this hand and the strip gets slightly thinner and you can widget it in. And then when you finish, you just go down to the next size. But that's a labour of love doing that. But if you've got a wooden floor, I seriously recommend Draft X. You can do like this. They give you one of these and a box of stuff. And it's... It's good, it, it saves you a lot of money, and drafts are horrible, especially around the ankles. Next one. Letter plate flap. I think you all should have letter plate flaps. I really like them, and I like the ones with flap. You don't have to have it. This has got brushes in behind. I like brushes on their own. I've got five different sizes, brown, black, white. And if you really want to go kind of OCD with the letter plate flap, there's something called an eco flap which is totally unbelievable. You fit it over your letterbox and you can come up from outside with a single sheet of A4 and push it through and it will come inside the house and land on the floor. It's a single sheet of A4 can push an eco flap open, but no matter how windy or stormy it is, the flap will never move. It's so cleverly balanced and it's so cleverly balanced that it will let something in, but it won't open under wind pressure. Next one, you might see her door. Oh yeah, what we found, this is the sort of stuff 
I'm not sure whether you want to know this, but it's such fun for me. Go on, what we found you wouldn't believe. So you remember that first picture we had of the pussycat? This poor lady was living in a house with that underneath her front door. She was actually living in the room that that front door is part of, and the social workers and the uh, nurse came around. They said, we think we should get you a more efficient electric fire. She had a three-bar fire, three bars on all the time, and she spent her entire life savings in five years. And the problem with having a more efficient electric fire is they're all 100% efficient, so I just kind of burst out laughing, unless you're going to go to a heat pump. We, we actually did that for her. We put on a new threshold, new weather bar on the door, and made it so there was no draft. She did have one of those rolled up socks in front of it, but she'd spent a lot of money. By the time we finished, she only needed one bar of her electric fire on. So, and she was living in that room, it was so sad. She had drafts in the window, draft in the fireplace, draft out the back. But that's a bit unusual, that. But people do have gaps under their front doors. I've even seen a gap under the front door where the wind comes underneath the door threshold, the sill of the door, and then up between the door and the floorboard. And so again, that was like everything sealed, but drafty front door. Next one. Oh, there he is, look, that's my friend. This was a friend of mine who had cold ankles all the time uh, in her kitchen, and she said, please, would I come around and have a look and see if I could find out? So I took the plinth off her kitchen unit, and I say, what's underneath your sink? And this is actually a floorboard missing, like there's no floorboard there. And so you just like straight to outdoors under the floor. There was another one missing further down. I actually put them back in and foamed it all up for her. And she, she said, I don't have cold ankles anymore. I said, well, I'm not surprised. I said, the people that fitted the kitchen deserve hang drawing and quartering. But it, it's, it's worth having a look to see what's underneath yours if you live in a wooden floorboard house. Next one. Who wants a question? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Next one. Oh, the stats. I think it's probably a bit out of date. I've done more than 250 homes now. The cheapest one I did was £1.50. That was just one tube of squidgy stuff. I think biggest savings, £600 a year. For the front door job that we saw, she'd spent 3000 And now she'd be probably spending five, 6000 um, not a single loft trap was insulated during the first season of Draft Busters. One client would have saved a thousand pounds if we'd have seen her five years ago. She had a redundant air brick, which is one of these air bricks that's got do not remove gas appliance, blah, blah, blah. She had a back boiler in her lounge. They took it out and put a condensing boiler in the kitchen. They didn't take out the, the air brick, which was nine inches by six inches, straight to outdoors. Even worse, they hung a radiator in front of it. And so now I've got draft busters. I'm, I'm a good plumber. I can take radiators off, take the radiator off, take the grill off that says do not remove. And I used to be a corgi plumber, so I know what I'm doing when I block up flue vents. But it was ridiculous. And her loft trap had a gap down each side because somebody made it change from up to down. And the air, wind was coming in behind her radiator through the door upstairs. She couldn't use her lounge all winter. Next one. Just on loft traps. Yeah. I, I really like using a sheet of uh, PIR board foam with fiberglass on it, uh, sorry, foam with foil on it and just cut it exactly right. And I'm afraid I'm a bit OCD with insulation, like my loft has got this much insulation, <laughs> nearly twice as much as the minimum. And my loft trap is two loft traps and the second one is three inches of PIR. Um, and so you need to make sure you've got good insulation, but draft proofing is very important on a loft trap. If you've got a ladder, you can sometimes make them work, but the thickest bit you can get on there are the best. And you need to be careful it doesn't jam it up around the edges. So our clients for draft busters come from Reading Borough Council Winter Watch, local debt advice service send them, GPs, social workers, community care, people that help people in difficulties in the town. Lots of our clients come through existing clients, so when we've done one, their friends tell them down the road, and I try and say to them, please don't do about too many, because we've only got a certain capacity for doing stuff. But um, some through comes through the grease, and increasingly we're getting loads of stuff on our website and stuff. We've got a Draft Busters website, and I think in the last, basically the last year, we've set up five Draft Busters groups in other towns and places round about Reading. And I quite enjoy doing that. So I just go and train them and then get, let them do it. And they're doing better than we're doing in Reading now. Next one. <laughs> so energy saving advice. I quite like energy saving advice. Um, keep doors and windows closed. It's a bit kind of 
simple, but you do need to do it. But I also like to open windows in the morning, 20 minutes for breakfast in your bedroom, close it before you go to work or close it when you finish doing that. And then draft proofing is the next one. It's really good draft proofing. It's a very good return on investment. We've seen the returns. Average draft busters uh, for houses is about £25 per house. And that's, it used to be 22, it's gone up slightly. Um, and they are generally saving that 100 or 160 pounds. I've got somebody who wrote to me and said we saved 250. And then after you've done the draft proofing insulation, the boys have talked about that. And then turning down the thermostat. If you want to save energy, turn the thermostat down. Turning down one, I'm not really sure about these figures, but I'll have a shot. One degree down will save you 5%. Two degrees down will save you 10%. And three degrees is not quite 15, but it's getting that way. And the problem I have with thermostats, if you've got a thermostat, you need to get rid of it and have something called a programmable room thermostat, something which can do time and temperature. When, I don't know, when, when I get up in the morning, I don't need my house to be 21. It's okay at 18 because I'm going around, I'm having breakfast, getting dressed, moving around. If you're old, like I am, then you might be going to sit down and you might want it a bit warmer. So you have to take what I say with a pinch of salt, but you, you, you're saving probably 10 or 15% for breakfast time and then during the day, turn it down. I don't know what you want to turn it down to, 15, 16, something like that. In the afternoon, if you've got kids or you're still active, 18 until you sit down in the evening. And then I'll let you have 21. But please don't go 22, especially if you want to save money. You need to reduce that. So 21 is good, 19 and a half. If you can start acclimatizing yourself, if you do want to save energy, which is also saving money, then wear some extra clothes. I've got a boy on draft bus who wearing a hat and a coat, um, but he, he was really good. He wrote down how much energy he could spend on his gas fire in the evening and he turned it into minutes and then he would take his hat and coat off, have the gas fire on for 20 minutes and then he'd put his hat and coat back on again. Well, sad lad. When we finished, he could have it on for three hours. But it, I was well impressed with him. He knew how much he could spend and he didn't go over it. What's your impression of the hive type? I love the hive, all the ones, the app-based ones, I love them. I, I, as I say, I don't have a heating system, so <laughs> I don't have one. I used to have something called an optimizer, which actually worked out how the house was moving, and then it, it brought the temperature back in, because you can have it overshoot temperature, which is called hysteresis on a thermostat. But hive and nest and all those ones, brilliant. And you need... You can do individual room I, controls as well? Pers well, I used to design heating systems. I don't much like individual rooms. I prefer to treat the whole house as a thing and keep the rooms. If you have one room cold, you kind of, you, you're not being good to the house. You can have too much condensation going in there or you can get troubles. And so I, I kind of like the house to be, I used to design bedrooms at 18, lounge at 21, bathroom 21, kitchen 18, hallway 18. But it's, it's, a, it's a rough science and I'm long since retired from heating systems. Programmable room thermostat hive. We might have hive and nest coming next. Try the next one. How are we doing? Are we, ru are we running out of time yet? Oh, here we are. So, I don't know what that is. Draftbusters website. You can look it up, Draftbusters and Reading, and it will come up. And it's, there's loads of stuff on there. I've recently revamped it a bit because I've got advanced draft proofing, which is kind of, I get a bit OCD about it. Like drafts coming out of socket outlets is definitely advanced draft proofing. But the simple stuff, I've also put on there a page which is if you want to save 40 percent on your heating bill how do you do it prices have gone up 40 percent you might want to bring it back down 40 percent it does involve lifestyle changes and is tough but it can be done i've tried to make it simple next one oh we're out of time that's it see we're out of time except i'm not really out of time so if you want to ask if you want to ask questions as there's, a, there's somebody at the back that's got a really dirty question for me because I've, I've specially asked them, but we, I'm happy to answer questions. I like patio doors, and what should I do for that? Patio, yeah, patio doors are tricky, but you need to find them. And the, I've mentioned those sticky-on nylon brush draft strips. They're really good for patio doors. You need to check and make sure that the ones that are in... I don't know whether I can do it on these doors, but sometimes this little black thing here... You can slide a draft strip into it that you can actually buy, which is a nylon back and then nylon brushes. And it sometimes gets crunched with opening and shutting too many times. You have a really good look and find out where the drafts are. Those sticky on nylon brushes is my secret for patio doors. Yeah. 
Replacing the, um, the draft strips around double glazing, yeah. things like that. Um, is it just one type, or do you have to buy the type that fits your? Yeah, you, or is it a there are generic ones that fit lots of windows. It's not as easy as you think to replace them, but I have done it for draft busters several times, and. I just buy a roll of it and hope it's right. If you buy the generic one, the problem with it is the bit that it fits into is quite often different sizes. You, there's a couple of companies on Amazon and eBay where you can buy a sample set of eight different ones and then work out which one's the best one for you and then buy a roll of it. And so that's, that's what I would do is buy that sample set of testers. The other thing you can do is to go down to your local UPVC window company with your bit and say if you've got anything like this. And they should, for like 20 quid or something, give you a big bundle of it because they pretty much throw it on the floor. Yeah. We've got, we've got an elderly mother who turns up and turns up the thermos up to the sort of soil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'd send her a bill. <laughs> yeah, well, you can, you can switch the boiler off as well. That'll sort her out. Good fun, that question. I enjoyed that question. Thank you. No <laughs> charge. Is there anything that you'd recommend for, you know, quite, sometimes people have mentioned air bricks. Yes. Is there something that you'd recommend to maybe fit over air bricks that you could maybe remove? Yeah. The so there are lots of different types of air bricks. There are air bricks for combustion appliances, which are for gas fires, wood fires, sometimes very big range cookers. And that air brick, you shouldn't really seal it up. I think that if you were to work out how much drafts you had in your house, you'd have probably 10 times more drafts in the house than that air brick is doing, so I kind of don't mind too much sealing it up. But you need to be very careful with that sort of thing. Don't seal up gas or combustion air bricks. There are other sorts of air bricks, as the underfloor ones which are outside. You really should not seal those up. You want those to be ventilating under the floor, but you don't want any of those drafts coming into the house, so you need to do do the strips and um, paint as made or under the skirtings. And it's not just under the skirting, sometimes it's the, up the door frames, above the top of the door frame, the draft goes in up the back of the door, lining and comes out above, all sorts of things happen. I've even had it come out of the lock hole where the lock latch sits in and they've drilled right through the frame and there's draft coming out through there. So you need to look round for those drafts. There are air bricks in some houses which are a bit like these ones but made out of plaster in old bedrooms in 1950s, 1960s houses. And for those ones I, I like to seal them up. Ideally you smash it off and plaster it back in, put a big ball of fibreglass in the hole and don't worry about too much outside. I usually use fibreglass in a poly bag, shove it in and then replaster it. If it's got screws in it and it's not used, or if it's some kind of weird air brick ventilating a chimney, for instance, so I'm not big into ventilating chimneys, I undo the screws, I put a piece of cardboard exactly the right size behind it with painter's mate on the back of the cardboard, shove it on the wall, screw the thing back on again, and it's never going to be drafty again because I just sealed it up. And it doesn't matter what they do to twiddle it or if it's louvers or what type. I like sealing up air vents because they're waste, they're, well, they're wasting energy, they're wasting money. So there are other types of air bricks that I can think of that would be not great to have. Some, the chimney ones are the good ones. Sometimes they do them in under stair cupboards or even in the bottom thing of the stairs, which goes down under the floor and lets drafts come out. So have a good look round. Sealing up air bricks is one of my hobbies, but don't seal up gas or combustion appliance ones. How would you sound different? Um, if you've got a gas boiler that's not a condensing boiler, then it's probably open vented and you shouldn't do it. But most people now, there's not so many open vented. If you've got a gas fire that's got going up the chimney, then you've got it. If you've got a wood burner, you probably should have one. I've got a question over there. Um, Speak it up because I'm a bit so deaf. I'm sorry if I've missed something, but don't you need some, some ventilation in the house? Um, a bit, um, how do you balance the amount of ventilation? Right. Really? Yeah. Good question, very good question. I probably got a long answer and a short answer, but you need ventilation. So I like opening windows to do what I call purge ventilation, that in the morning open 20 minutes, close it. It depends if it's windy, you can open for two minutes and it's done as much as it would do on a calm day for 20 minutes. So you need to kind of be sensible with it. If there's only one person in the house, 
you probably don't need to open a window very often because there's going to be drafts coming in, cracks and gaps and all sorts. The caveat to that is if it's not windy, then there's not much air change going on. If it's blowing a gale, the house is kind of already cold. So draft proof, ventilate properly. In a bathroom, if you've got a bathroom upstairs with a door, I really like it when people shut the bathroom door and put the window on a special one. You haven't got those windows here, but you can some windows you can kind of go like that and you can have it fixed in an open position and it can ventilate the room. So if you've had your shower, whatever, bath, drying, washing in there, do that to the window, shut the door to the house. Really good thing to do. And that's getting rid of the nasty ventilation. If you've got a cooker hood and you're steamy cooking, switch it on if it goes outside. If it doesn't go outside, I like it to go outside, but I like it to shut when it's not being used. Um, any more things about ventilation? I think in the summer you can do that clever trick with the windows. They are secure and they are shut, but you can put your fingers in, you've got a nice draft. So I love it autumn, um, late spring and summer. Just have the windows perpetually a little bit open, depending whether you've got too much noise around or whether you shut them at night anyway. It's a kind of lifestyle thing. I know people that open those ones and just have them open all night, every night, summer and winter. So, but you're, it does cost money to do it. I think you might have to talk to me afterwards. I've got more to say, but that's good for now. Thank you for that question. Good. When are we finishing? Are we allowed to finish early? Is it good? Don't ask any more questions, <laughs> Louis. So I have an external vent on my uh, yeah. cupboard. It tends to rattle in the wind. Yeah. Now. How do you deal with that. I, in, on a cooker hood, you can get something which is an electric shutter inside it, okay. and it will shut the pipe, basically. So, and then when you switch the cooker hood on, it automatically opens it, okay. and that will do it. Those flappy ones, it will probably still do it, even with the shutter in there, mm. but at least it won't be coming in the house. You can get fan grills, which have got louvers on them. Again, they are actuated when the cooker goes on, they come open, and so they're kind of sprung shut and electrically opened and I quite like those ones There's, there are different ones I've generally gone for open louvres on um, fan ducts and make sure the fan has got its own iris or something that does it I, I'm, I've got a good secret for you for bathroom fans I've discovered this I renovated an old people's home two years ago where we had an interesting thing with a loft insulation it had 100 millimeters already and they said the architect said, I want 270, that's building regulation. So I got the boys in, special grant, and it was 36 flats, and they wanted to charge us 7,000 pounds to insulate all these flats. And they said, you can have 270 millimeters, and it's 7,000 pounds. There was some sort of grant going on. Or, what I said, I want 400 millimeters. And they said, it's no difference in cost, <laughs> 7,000 or 400. So I said, we'll have 400 millimeters. That was electrically heated, that block but I had beautiful fans in all their bathrooms. And you should write this down if you've got a bathroom fan. Next time it goes wrong, fit one, it's called a Svara, S-V-A-R-A, -A, made by Ventaxia. And that is such a clever fan, it is unbelievable. It sits in your bathroom or your cloakroom and it thinks for you. Have you ever seen a fan that can think for you? It normally runs at 10%, but you can get on your phone and you can tell it only run at 5% or you can tell it don't run at night when I go in the bathroom. You can tell it almost anything. If you go in there, it goes up to 35%. If you go in there and make a lot of steam, have a shower or something, it goes up to 80% until the humidity has dropped below 75% and then it shuts down and gradually gets back down to the 10%. If you make the humidity go up too high, it just goes into overdrive and gets rid of it all. But it's incredibly versatile and it is such a beautiful fan. I, I've fitted loads of them. <laughs> I buy them on eBay for 50 quid, but they're a bit more expensive now. Ventaxia, Svara, again, S-V-A-R-A. I think we'll have a... Have we finished? We finished, I reckon we finished. Are we done? Everybody happy? Thank you very much. <laughs>